Dead End Job was released this past month and is billed as kind of a 90s homage to its animation with a roguelite kind of gameplay. And while the basics of this game certainly impress, I kind of wish that there was a little bit more meat on these ghostly bones. But the story is that we are a uh, non-copyrighted uh, claim uh, Ghostbuster who has to go around their town clearing out all the various ghosts with the overall kind of persistent goal of earning enough money to unlock all the biomes in the game. I believe there is a total of four at the moment. But each area you go into is procedurally generated using kind of handmade rooms but you never know where they're going to show up or what ghosts are going to be in them. Each biome has its own area of ghosts for you to bust, and the general idea is you're going to hit the ghosts with your normal attack enough times to weaken them, and then you'll use your vacuum to suck them up. And you can see in the bottom right that you do have to wait for things to cool off. Now the more ghosts that you fight in an area, you'll earn money, and the money again is used kind of for your persistent option. If you're hoping to buy new gear or new unlocks like that, unfortunately Dead Ed John doesn't do that. The only things that kind of change how your basic gameplay works is that you'll find random items that will take up the two inventory slots in the bottom right. They can either be food recovery or they may do crazy effects such as big head mode, uh, machine guns, shotguns, you name it. There is a very loose persistent unlock system with achievements that are tied to unlocking new items that can show up in future runs. But in terms of unlocking new ghosts or new challenges, there really isn't anything along those lines. The only major upgrade that you'll get that kind of carries over occurs when you've captured enough ghosts to fill that little bar that you see kind of appearing next to our character. Every time that bar fills up over the course of a single run, you'll get a promotion, and you'll choose from one of three randomly chosen perks to put onto your character. While I didn't die, I do think that if you run out of health in a map, that you lose some of your perks. And the perks themselves vary in terms of their overall usefulness, including increased move speed, a split shot, and reducing the cooldown on your gun, and so on. There are some few advanced challenges that unlock that give you kind of like additional reasons to go through these levels. It's uh, built as kind of internet uh, requests. And they'll unlock special currencies that will allow you to get concept art and things along those lines. And I gotta say, I love the overall aesthetics of the game. It looks right out of something like Cow and Chicken or Ren and Stimpy. And the music, while you can't hear it all the way, Time comes through as kind of like a 50s a jukebox style. But with that said though, the game feels a little light where it matters most, and that is providing variance on runs. And we're going to talk about that next, but first a quick shout out to our current Game Wisdom supporters and sponsors. And now for a quick thank you to our current Game Wisdom Patreon supporters and sponsors. And if you continue this discussion on game design, be sure to check out our Discord channel, link down below. If you're looking for more wisdom about game design, be sure to check out my latest offering of books, 20 Essential Games to Study, aimed for first-time developers and students looking for some inspiration for their upcoming games, and Game Design Deep Dive Platformers if you're interested in anything regarding 2D and 3D platforming design. They're both available in print, digital, and wherever books are being sold. Everything about the look and feel of Dead End Job certainly works, but the problem is that I don't feel like there's enough here to keep somebody motivated to see it through all the way to the end. While there is remote couch co-op unlocked for Dead End Job, the game itself doesn't really, I think, do enough to make each run feel varied. The game hints, as you can see on the screen, that you have 30 days to kind of get enough money to unlock all the biomes. And by like the 15, like 16 day mark, I was already starting to feel very bored with the game. And it's a shame because the basic gameplay certainly works, and especially works if you have a second person to play with. But 
the runs themselves just aren't varied enough to make them feel different or stand out from one another. And the ghosts themselves all kind of follow the same basic archetypes from one biome to the next. There are kind of quote unquote boss ghosts that sometimes pop up, but it's still just the same thing. Shoot them till they run out of health, vacuum them up. From a very weird quality of life issue, for some reason, it doesn't seem like you can drop any of your two power-ups once you have those slots filled. Even if you want to pick something else up, I was mashing every button on my gamepad and I couldn't find any way to get rid of it. It was just like a very weird thing or a very weird quality of life issue to have with this game. And ultimately I think that kind of is where I have to leave things with Dead End Job. It has a great look to it, but it, there just doesn't seem to be enough here that's going to keep somebody wanting to play it all the way to the end. Unless you have a buddy and you're kind of just going through it with them. If you're looking for a, I guess a very light version of a roguelite, then I would say give this one a check. But if you've been practicing on games like Dead Cells, buying up Isaac and other roguelikes and lights, this one may be too simplistic for you. But I would like to thank the developers for giving me a press key to check this one out. And let me tell your game in the future. Please want to say to get in touch. Come back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where we are in science of games. Once again, this has been Dead End Job, and I will see you all next time. Take care. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoy things, be sure to do all the liking and subscribing that the kids are doing these days. Check out our Discord channel link down below where we hang out and chat game design and come back later tonight for our regular streamings. But that's it. And tune in for more great content here and on Game Wisdom, where we examine the art and science of games.